You've been asking for it, and here it is. I've shown you examples of how to instigate a fight and ambush other PMCs. This time, we dive into scenarios where we are the ones getting caught out. It is also possible to catch me off guard. If you want to see and listen to my decision making in real time, come check out the live streams over at twitch.tv slash crashed. We have the stream going 6 days a week on average, Monday through Saturday. Hope to see you there. It's not easy to gather these clips, because to be honest, if you are the one getting ambushed, chances are you will not make it. We all know how easy it is to die in Tarkov, and a well executed ambush leaves her no chance to escape. With the upcoming clips, I hope I can paint the picture clear enough and give insights in my methods of dealing with them. No matter how many right decisions you will make in Tarkov, there will always be that one guy who surprises you. And before you know it, you have bullets flying towards your head. This is exactly what happens in the first scenario. Nope. Getting shot. Moisty and I are just crossing the land bridge as we get shot. Moist is getting hit and we are in a really bad spot. My first priority is to make sure we stick to cover and figure out where the shots are coming from. That way we can formulate a plan. From our back. Moist calls out the shots are coming from our back, the train side. This is the first step in determining what to do next. We fall back into the container and can see rounds coming from the train hill. Oh yeah, 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 I don't see them. Exactly from where Moist called out. This information levels the playing field somewhat. We're pinned down with not much options to move. I know if we leave this container, we're guaranteed to die. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm dead. Moist did not stay close enough to the container. And without any cover, he had no chance out in the open. Positioning is key. Moving from cover to cover will decrease the chances of you getting ambushed. Being inside the container saved us, for now. Before we do anything, pop a painkiller. This will ensure that we keep our mobility when our legs get taken out. I always instinctively take a painkiller when I can, when I know I'm about to get engaged. Notice the one door to the side we are behind. This gives full cover from our enemy and is our best friend right now. It enables us to heal up a little bit and gives us a little bit more time before we make a move. I stay in the container but move to the back, making sure I stay perpendicular to the one door that's closed. This ensures that our enemy can't see us move. It provides cover and, by moving to the back of the container, we open up more routes for escape. When this guy pushes and we're about to get into a close quarters 1v1, we need the ability to move around. If we would get caught out in the front side of the container, the only way would be to go backwards, which is a straight line, aka certain death. From the back side of the container, it's way easier to weave in and out of cover. This is the main thing. We want to make sure to make full use of every single little detail to gain control over the situation. It may not seem like much, but when you add up a lot of these small things, you will significantly improve your odds. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all super dead here as well, I think. Does this guy have a laser? The enemy's laser is a clear giveaway that he's making the push. We cancel the man animation with a left click and we brace. It's far from ideal, but we are ready to fight now. This is it. We miss the first shot and he immediately moves to the side. This is the little spark and the little luck we need for this engagement. His movement to the side gives us the time to rechamber and get a second shot off. Oh, never mind. He was by himself, so we live to fight in another scenario. In this one, we take out a two-man squad while standing off scavs. We were just enjoying a nice walk down the beach. With a treasure map in hand, we are looking for long-lost precious booty. Legend has it that they are buried here by pirates of the olden days. As we search, we get shot at by a scav from the tower. Oh man. Immunity? What? I have Im immunity to shotgun shot- oh. Wait, I, I can't even see you bro. We clap the dude in the tower and continue our search for the hidden stashes. With the amount of noise in the area, PMCs are incoming. Fast forward. Okay. That is not a scav. It is very difficult to judge where the suppressed gunfire is exactly coming from. I move my head slightly to get a better estimate. Listen closely. There's at least two different weapons firing. Is he shooting at me? At this point, I'm not sure if they are shooting at me, but for the general guideline, if you can hear a suppressor fire, you better bet this guy is extremely close. We have to get ready. 
When we spot the first guy, take a quick shot and move to anything that breaks their line of sight and provides a little cover. You have to really act fast in a situation like these. The general principle is the same as it is in the first clip. Get to cover and determine enemy location. He goes down in the second hit. Same thing as before. Pop a painkiller and relocate. From the gunfire we heard before, it is likely that there's at least two enemies here. As we heard the gunfire from two separate sources. They always have a friend, right? What I usually do in situations like these is to scan the horizon for movement. It is likely that our enemy is not moving at all, and set up shop in a bush or another position that makes him difficult to spot. I don't ADS, because this will slow down my movement speed. Could be that the, there was another guy shooting, I'm not sure if that was the scav, that's kind of what usually gets me. I sidestep and move as unpredictable as I can. Maybe we can bait a shot and see the muzzle flash. Although I have to admit, this is unlikely when dealing with suppressed weapons. We haven't spotted any movement, nor got shot at. Indicators that our enemy is not pushing aggressively. This gives us the time to assess our situation. Patch and heal up, reload your weapon, etc. Prepare to get back into the best shape you can for another fight. Notice that our Kirasa body armor is completely destroyed and will not help us anymore. Right here I make the mistake of not dropping it straight away and I'll tell you why in a little bit. I'm not too sure if he has a mate, to be honest. I'm not hearing any scavs. Public service announcement. There's always, always one more. And this still gets me after all this time playing this game. We are now healed back up. And my gut instinct does tell me, from many a bad experience in the past perhaps, to keep scanning the horizon for enemy movement. And there we go. Thanks, gut instinct. Fire a couple of shots, get back into Goffer, relocate. He has a mate. I don't have any armor. I remind myself of the fact that we are armorless. When your armor is completely destroyed, it acts as if it's not even there. This affects our playstyle and we have to proceed with extreme caution, as it will not take a lot to kill us at this point. I can't flank on the left because of the scav. At this point, I'm trying to replay in my mind what happened before when we engaged the scavs at the watchtower. I am pretty sure there were two scavs. So there will still be one in that area because we only killed the one at the top. This limits our ability to move. I want to flank on the left to engage the PMC. We know his rough location and I want to capitalize and make him react to us instead of the other way around. However, the scav will give us away when he shoots at us, or we have to shoot them, and make a lot of noise. The lack of armor makes this a very bad idea as well. It will be doable with a different setup, and some armor to tank a hit when needed. However, we are not in that position, so this option is out of the question. Movement. Take a shot and break line of sight in between rechambering. We overstayed our welcome a little bit with the third shot and almost paid the ultimate price for it. Remember, we don't have any armor at this point. This is the end, boys. Listen close to the enemy gunfire here. Just as we pop another painkiller because the other one is bound to run out soon, it sounds like the enemy took out the scavenger on the watchtower. Our enemy was already moving towards our left, so my guess is that he will try to flank on our left. This is another important piece of information that we can use to make a plan. I don't want to sit in the same area to heal for too long. So as we get up, fire in the general direction. This is not necessarily a shot with the intent to kill. Sure, we might get lucky, but this shot serves two purposes. It can force the enemy back into cover as we make a retreat. So it lessens the possibility that we get shot or seen. And if it works out the way that we want it to, it gives the enemy a location to look at. 
This can trick them into looking at our old position when we are already moved up to a different one. Wait, he's moving up on the left. Our enemy confirms he is moving to the left and does not seem to know we have relocated. We don't really have a clear shot here, so we don't take one. If he is moving to the left, I have a plan now. But I don't want to risk making this clear to our enemy and giving him the opportunity to respond. We don't move up just yet. We want to keep an eye on where he is going before we commit. We currently have the advantage of knowing his whereabouts, where he seems to be actively looking around. Don't give up this position yet. We need to try to strike from a surprise position with our current armor situation. It's completely destroyed and gives us no longer any protection. I made a mistake by not dropping it sooner. Apart from the lack of protection, there are two additional reasons for this. Take into consideration the color of your armor. The Kurasa being blue contrasts quite harshly with the green grasslands. All body armor slow you down somewhat in Tarkov. So effectively, now our Kurasa is making us easier to spot and slows us down, whilst not providing any benefits. Drop it. While our enemy is moving up on our left, we are moving up on our right. Stay under the crest of the hill and we relocate unnoticed. We don't see any movement on the horizon and he does not seem to be on the opposite side of the road. The area seems clear-ish if we are fast. This was our little plan. His body might have some armor for us. Oh, nice AK. This might also come in handy. Please guys, for the love of god, if you do something like this, check the fire mode. Yeah. Oof, you bugger. So, reflection on what you can learn from this as the opposition. My guess and mindset when looking back at things from my own perspective. There were a couple of moments when we were heavily hit, had to fall back into cover. Heal up, reload, etc. We were without armor for the entire duration of the cat and mouse with the second guy. And he most likely got the call out from his mate of our location when the first guy dropped. I believe if guy number two played more aggressive, he would have had an easy job cleaning things up. But because he was more passive, it gave us more time to assess, gather clues, formulate different plans and level the playing field. I believe we slowly gained more and more control over this engagement. They had to drop and they lost it, which resulted eventually in the straight up 1v1 with the Mosin when we were alternating shots. After that we turned the tables. We had the most information throughout the whole battle. We were aware of enemy movement and took control over the situation, continuously picking fights and exchanges on our terms, in control of the tempo. But this is only possible if the enemy will allow it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on it, looking back. Of course, hindsight is always 2020, right? It was a good fight though. I don't mean any disrespect on the opposing players. This is purely educational and I try my best to also point out the mistakes I make myself of course. And not, like I said before, it's not like I'm some super talk of god or think I'm such a good player. Far from it. I really aren't. Proof for this is on the live stream. Come say hi, Monday through Saturday on twitch.tv slash crashed. See you there. And as always, thanks for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribe for more EFT. Kevin over and out.